It's Loser Leaves Wrestling with Moet Jazzwall Red Jefferson. Yeah. Woo! Oh yeah, there you go, energy. Yeah, that's a lot of energy I just dispelled. I don't have anything left for the show. I, Moet, I can how tell. Are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fine. I'm surviving. How are you doing, Red? Oh, I'm fine. I'm covered in wasps things. I was uh I was going hiking and then one stung me and got stuck. And then I had to beat it with my hat. How'd it get stuck? Was it like uh, you got leg hair or what's what's the deal? No, I have no like I have shockingly small amount of leg hair, like where people are just like, do you shave your legs? I'm like, no, it's just thin and blonde. Mosquitoes, like... mosquitoes get stuck in my arm hair and my leg oh, hair. Do they? I see them get caught up and they, they, they try <laughs> to get in and then they get like, it's very uh, satisfying from like a nature point of view. Is the woos and what's? Woos are real fun things and what's are not so fun things. And oh, before we say that, please like and subscribe and all the things. <laughs> like if you're listening to the podcast, review us. Don't be a bum. And also follow us on Loser Leaves Wrestling on all the places, except for Twitter, which is Loser Leaves Pod. What is your first woo of the evening? The Chris Jericho MJF segment where MJF walks in. He gives them uh, inner, inner circle jackets as gifts. He opens the box up himself, which is my favorite thing in the whole thing. He, he, he wraps the presents and then opens it up in front of Why them. Why even wrap it? Yeah. Why even wrap it if you're immediately going to open it for them? Too funny. Uh, too funny. And then he gives uh, jackets to everybody except Sammy, which was a very good touch. Sammy's pissed off. And then um, they kind of tease whether he's going to join the inner circle. Uh, Sammy uh, MJF is waiting for Chris Jericho to ask him if he wants to be in the inner circle. And Jericho is, is, is trying to figure out what the heck MJF is even doing. And it ends in a really great, like, soap opera moment where he's like, uh, what, I don't remember what he says. Oh, like, yeah, I like that guy. Sammy, Sammy's just like, what a lose. And then Jericho's like, no, 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 no. Perhaps not. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, this was so full of information. Like, it was so full of, like, from uh, MJF not wanting to asked to be in the group to Jericho to not want to ask him to be in the group that growing dynamic where Jericho appreciates MJF but MJF is definitely working Chris Jericho and this beautiful slight to Sammy Guevara this like I don't know if it's going to lead to something yet but I would love for him to get into Jericho's ear and just be like this Sammy guy is he really even doing anything besides causing scandal yeah. and hurting other wrestlers? Is he even doing that? They're so good at adding little beats into the storyline like that, like little things that they can they can capitalize on if they want. They don't have to like this. This like they they've got they they planted the seeds of of a potential Sammy versus MJF feud if they wanted, or you know just by just by not giving him a jacket, it just kind of adds a little bit of of drama. Like maybe Sam, like like you said, Sammy could talk to Chris Jericho. This can something can happen, or they. It doesn't. I mean, nothing will happen or, from it. Or maybe nothing. Exactly. And they give you. They have so many options. And because of these little Easter eggs, later on, five months from now, he could have a program with Sammy Guevara. This with the seed. Great camera angles too. I gotta throw that in. I think, like, usually, uh, you, you know, not it's subtle, not a lot, but just, I just, uh, I'm just very appreciative of the fact that the camera moved to get into close ups and whatnot of of MJF opening the thing and stuff. Usually, you just kind of like a like an SNL skit, you know, you just kind of hold back and watch the whole thing. But no, this guy is like Birdman. He's, he's jumping in, in and he's moving around and very dramatic. It was a big and, fan. And the way they introduced it too, MJF tells you there's a camera person there. Like, AEW does this a lot, which I appreciate. They're just like, hey, uh, I'm bringing you along for a reason. He's talking to the camera person uh, at the very beginning, which just sets up the reason why there's a camera person in the locker room, where he's showing them these gifts. I, it's a little thing, and wrestling's mostly forgotten that, but I love it. I, I love that. One thing, catch. did we even see the jackets? Do we even know what they look like? But like, we're big fans. I think it's absolutely adorable. Everything they're doing, absolutely adorable. Moet, we've just nailed this first woo. We just <laughs> fucking crushed this first woo. I main woo, besides that great MJF promo, Miro's Rumspringa bachelor party bit. Yeah. I thought it was, it was a fun thing. It, it, it was silly. I didn't necessarily get the reference to the record holding guy uh, i've seen him in uh, king of Kong, fistful of quarters oh uh, good i know he's like the record guy but, but like i just loved it I, I thought it was very fun it was very silly it was a great way to continue this story without taking up uh live tv time 
You know, like I thought it was a very well produced, fun little side segment. What do you think about that moment? I actually was so close to hating it. But then Billy Mitchell, the King of Kong uh, villain of that movie and the universe, he showed up and I was like, ah, that's such a bizarre and specific reference that it, I, I'm into it this now. I that. like it. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand why the hell he was there, what that had to do with anything. But it was fun. It was funny. I'm so excited to see part two. Yeah. Like, I, what is Billy Mitchell going to ha- bring them to for a rumspring of bachelor party? I'm into that. Yeah, yeah. This better pay off because I'm actually not into his character right now. I feel like. Hero? Yeah. I, like whatever his new character design is or whatever the hell is going on. It just seems off and like not. It just, I'm, I'm just waiting to have fun because I, I trust them. I think that something good can happen. Just something feels off. And I feel like they're just kind of figuring it out right now. They are getting there. Through these I segments. Think they are. I, I think they are compared to the past few times. This is the most fun I've had watching Miro so far. And I thought he was like, I think you should watch it again. I think yeah. you should watch it again with Billy Mitchell's coming up soon. You think about that the entire time uh, just to get you through it. It's fun. Uh, but what's your next move of the evening? What do you got? I thought the Darby Allen versus Ricky Starks match was fantastic. I thought that was one of the probably the best match of the night. Yeah, the yeah. Darby Allen. Well, it started off great. I think that was such a great way to. Oh, wait, that was my big woo. What the hell am I talking about? I circled it and everything. <laughs> yes, of course. Darby <laughs> Allen versus Ricky Starks. That was a great opener. Super hot. Like uh, they, they, uh, it started with such a sense of urgency, such a sense of urgency. Uh, and the best part of the match is the finish. It was a finisher that got the pin. Yeah. It was. Just- it was a clean finish, and they protected the coffin drop, which I think is very important to do. You know, like, because like uh, protecting, like, that's a cool move. Uh, I think it's a pretty interesting move. And I, I they have to protect some of these things. Uh, but like, yeah, what a great uh, opening match. Coffin drop is very well protected as well as the Judas effect. Chris Jericho's finisher. Um, I'm not sure if any others are protected the same way they are. Where if like he yeah. hits it, then the match is over. Uh, particularly with the coffin drop, it's such a stupid and reckless move from like a kayfabe perspective of like trying to do of doing like a, a trust fall essentially yeah. from the top rope that like he misses it a lot but that's what makes it great as as this like super deadly finisher of like well if he that one time he does hit it it's over and i like that i'm a lot. just worried about his neck when he does hit it when he does hit the move on them his neck jolts back each time i'm like that's gonna hurt your neck over time oh, man. Uh, but one thing that i love about these two specifically and they're just a great example of of gr- the best of this generation they'd sell so well yeah that was my big because, note yeah yeah darby allen sells like jeff hardy uh which is amazing because jeff hardy's one of the better the best sellers of all time his body language just looks in pain he could like get up and his body looks in pain and ricky starks has the best facial expressions i had no idea i had no idea that this was going to be so great yeah. i'm big uh, ah yeah, the uh, uh, specifically Ricky Starks watching him selling everything was really great. I think uh, it, it to me it played out because uh, the next match, the match after that, uh, was Isaiah Cassidy and Chris Jericho. Isaiah Cassidy, I felt like the the chemistry wasn't there. Bringing it back to Starks, like seeing the way Cassidy sold moves made me appreciate Ricky Starks even more because it felt so meaningful the way he did it. <laughs> Um, like when he would throw Darby Allen into the turnbuckle, he would do it in a way where he would fall to the ground and like it sort of hurt him because he was putting so much force into it. And uh, he doesn't forget the things that he's working on. Like 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 his back is in pain. Ricky Starks, the entire match he was selling it. Yeah, the, the entire match. The minute it started hurting, you knew it was there. And so when he loses cleanly, like it makes sense. It's just like, ah, shit, Darby got him early. That's a great point. And, 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 and it makes it doesn't it doesn't hurt Ricky at all. It yeah. doesn't hurt Ricky in the list, which is so good. I like the Britt Baker versus Red Velvet. Uh, I like Britt Baker being back. I love, I think she's great. I think she's uh, she's missed in the division. Uh, I've, her presence uh, and her character, the way she turns back at the camera and blows a kiss before doing a move. Uh, and Red Velvet, real, this was a really good match for how short it was. Very good at both work, super hard. Uh, honestly, one of the better short uh, one of the better matches on the card today. And also just for the only women's match, again, the only women's match, it showed well. Like they did a good job of representing themselves. Uh, 
I'll quickly go over the next two because they're short. Uh, Hangman, well, next one gets short, but I have a, a secret one that I just wanted Ooh, to share with you. Secret one, uh, okay. Uh, Hangman slowly getting drunk during commentary. Yeah, that was good. Slowly the getting drunker and drunker, but not overdoing it. Comes out with not a glass of whiskey is kind of overdoing it. <laughs> no, no, he came out with a glass of whiskey, but he didn't act super drunk at the beginning. Yeah. He just acted super chill. But then every now and then he'd just be like, he'd just mumble his words, which <laughs> I thought were very good. Which also, and I don't that, know if he was, I, I still can't tell if that's real whiskey or not. I, if I that's, have to believe it's not. It's absurd. It's an, it's an it's absurd amount to do. Right? It's comedic, right? It's got to be. It has yeah. to be. I like that uh, uh, he comes out with the... Um, the like secret tags under everyone's names, you know, like that shows up. That's usually like, ah, oh, won the past eight matches and is, you know, yeah, 90 percent of the time. Some sarcastic asshole in the back writes hangman pages. And this one just said very unprepared, <laughs> which I thought, <laughs> just straight to the point, And I thought it was super funny. Yeah, that's very good. And just one last quick aside. Yeah. Orange Cassidy saying weenies. Weenies. Very good. That was good. And that's a step in the right direction for Orange Cassidy. Let's go back to basics. Give him a breather for a little bit. Let's not have that serious Orange Cassidy come out for a little while because that should only be wrapped for special occasions. We don't want to see the Hulk all the time. We want to know why Bruce Banner is all hurt, right? For sure, for sure. Can I do one extra one? Is yeah, one? give me an extra Speaking one. one uh, extra. John Silver, he was very silly tonight and it made me giggle, I think. what I miss? What'd he John, do? John Silver, well, he took, uh, or somebody took Orange oh. Cassidy's uh, glass and he puts it on, he does a little like silly dance yeah. and he's like, <laughs> bloop, 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 and it, it made me laugh. I think he's he did, doing like, the great. the blue meanie dance? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. That's all. Excellent. 